All right, thanks for logging on to StateChamps.tv, another playoff edition of the OT with Markowski. My name is Lauren Plant, host of State Champs, joined as always by Tom Markowski of the Detroit News. All right, Tom, well, I'll tell you what, there was a Twitter war going on. Uh, as if there wasn't enough bad blood between Brother Rice and Farmington Harrison already, uh, we had this suspension come up between Mario, uh, affecting Mario Ojemudia. And basically what it was is uh, a picture was sent by someone, we don't know who, but a picture was sent by someone to the MHSAA that uh, Oja Media was wearing pads at a Nike camp, a football camp that took place over the summer. That's not allowed, right. and he was suspended. Talk about it. Well, for one thing, a lot of kids do this. Now, I don't mean to say that they wear pads, but a lot of kids go to these elite camps. That's what it was. It was out in Oregon. It was the Nike elite camp. What Herring John Harrington told me was at the end of the camp, the Nike people wanted the kids to wear shoulder pads so they can take shots of them, you know, looking like football players because their workouts during the dead period are not allowed in pads. Now, this is a Michigan High School Athletic Association rule. I'm sure there's other associations throughout the country that do it too, but specifically for Mario Ojemudia, he could not do that. And Harrington told me, he tells his kids all the time, be careful, you can't do this, you can't do that. And Harrington took the heat. He says, obviously, I didn't tell Mario I'm to blame. Now, Mario probably was innocent enough during this whole thing and put the pads on, click, click, click. Now it's out there on the internet so everybody can see. And most of the time, like Harrington was telling me, talked to Nate Hampton with the MHSA uh, about this particular circumstances where he had to be suspended. And I'll get into why or how much is the suspension. But Nate Hampton said th this takes place quite a bit during the summer and, and it's reported right away. The players are suspended for the preseason scrimmage, um, and that's it. <laughs> you don't really miss much. You know, you you miss that four-way, which is or three-way, whatever the teams choose to play. Um, and of course, that's a big thing to get ready for the season, but it doesn't affect anything like it's affecting now. I think you have to take a look at what's happening now. They're playing Brother Rice this weekend. Why wasn't this thing put out last week before the Sea Home game? Why wasn't this put out before, let's say, the the any time any during game. the regular season, you know, a really. big game against Southfield in the second week, for for example. It's kind of funny. It's I gotta believe this. There's something. I don't really believe in coincidences, and I don't think it just came out just out of the blue at this time. So, my my gut feeling is somebody within the Rice family, which is a whole big lot of, family, a whole lot of people. So, I like you said, we don't know who it is. But John Harrington was concerned that he would be suspended for the rest of the playoffs, rest of the season. And Nate Hampton says, no, no, this, this type of infraction, we just suspend him for half the game. I don't, it must be written down there in some of the bylaws uh, that, you know, if something like this happens you, for a game, they just have a, a half game suspension. Unfortunate, um, it's just going to add fuel to the fire. Um, whatever bad blood there was between the schools uh, has increased. They got an injection of more quarts of, of bad blood into their system. So, you know, it's, it, you got to go with what you got, you know. And, and fortunately, he's not suspended for the whole game. So, you know, Mario's probably going to be jacked up for that second half. So. Absolutely. And if you're watching this after the game took place, well, you know full well exactly what went down. Did it hurt them or did it not? Was Mario just more fired up for the second half and then just tore a hole through that line? Or did it really play a factor into the game again? Uh, this is filmed before that game, so Jake Vento's injury is something that, that we also uh, are curious to find out. By the way, we'll have highlights of that game this week. We'll put it online, so make sure you check back often to and check that out. And and just to add another point, for a while now, the uh, Coaches Association in Michigan, the football coaches, have been trying to get rid of this. They, it I seems, mean, is it fair? Is it, is it you know, it seems rule? like a very um, gray area for one thing. Uh, just because his, you know, he wore it for a picture, okay, you're not supposed to wear the shoulder pads. Did he practice in the, did he work out in those shoulder pads or pads? You should show me video conclusive proof that uh, kid was, was wearing wor pads working at that with camp. Them. Right, working out with hit. them. Right. Then you can suspend them. Otherwise, it's pure conjecture. Well, let's that, say, I mean, let's say you, you put, let's say you put on the pads in your backyard during that time, right? Just to see how they fit, right? That's a violation, right? Why wouldn't you wear pads for a picture? 
Of course, you want to have them looking like football players. So we don't agree with I'm it. I'm confused. <laughs> yeah, we don't agree with it. MHSA, get rid of the rule. Exactly. Hopefully they will. Let's just put this to bed. All right. Uh, another interesting scenario that played out this week, and again, if the games have already taken place, we'll see what happened. And Ken says they have other kickers uh, within their family, but Scott Piowar, who hit the game-winning field goal against Plymouth, is a star soccer player. And he, of course, uh, unless craziness happened he was going to play in the state championship right. game and you know it might have worked out had the game been played at Troy Athens where you had the football game early and then maybe he had some you know maybe that's, that's happened in the past I remember a Bloomfield Hills Losser kicker who went to the championship game in soccer and wherever Grand Rapids area and then came back and, and was able to kick at night in their playoff game and Losser specifically put that game on a Saturday night so that the kid could you know take the ride back so right. and uh, I even remember a couple years ago in two different sports but we had uh, cross country and soccer and we had a kid at Auburn Hills uh, Oakland Christian who was oh, a cross country right. runner I do remember and that. he went and uh, ran his meet and yeah. then got on a plane and flew over to the soccer game and uh, to, to join his team, Oakland Christian, in the soccer final. So that, that's crazy, and you can get creative with that. But the question is, um, I, I guess, should, is, can they do anything? When a situation happens like that, it's just, hey, man, you're playing in two yeah. sports. We can't yeah, change well, times. Well, or well, Like I mentioned earlier, Lasser, you know, fudged it a little bit. Instead of playing that game during the afternoon, Hey, that kid's got a chance. They, now, obviously, when they schedule that game on a Monday, you know they're playing a semifinal in soccer on on Wednesday, and then the championship game on Saturday. So the losser, Dan Laurie, at, uh, the coach at Losser, said, "Well, let's schedule it for Saturday night, just in case they get to the final. We want our kicker. He was a heck of a kicker too. Right. So you know, but Canton doesn't have that choice because well, it's at Catholic no, Central. No, and it's at one o'clock in the afternoon. I'm, they, I'm sure they couldn't have moved that game no, it's, unless Catholic right, Central wanted, wanted to. to. And see he's going to play at 1 o'clock. Yeah. And I don't think it mattered to them whether they have a kicker or they don't have a kicker. Right. And the thing, too, with uh, um, but Tim Beckler, the coaches, Canton, telling me, he says, hey, the championship game trumps a district final. Let the kid play in a championship game. And also, they have two kickers, actually. They right. use a place kicker and a, uh, a guy that kicks off, you know, and he's losing both of them. Right. So I asked him, well, what are you going to do? And he texts me some message. <laughs> I can't really repeat. But... Um, <laughs> He says, that, you know, he's got to go on with it. They'll find somebody. Yeah. I mean, there's more than one kicker in the, or two kickers in this program. And, again, so. if you've already seen the game, yeah. well, you know what happened. Well, it'll be interesting since we it, doing this before the game. Right. What if it's 21-20 in, in Canton's and uh, – Seven yard line or right. fourteen yard line, and it's fourth and two, where you'd say, "Well, shoot, yeah, we're going to kick that ball because he kicked the winner last week." Well, that's right, we don't have him, so should we go for it on fourth and two, or do we depend on the kicker who realizes and kick for us? All right. Year? And, and the other pro and the other problem all is, yeah, it sure is. And the other thing is, and it's it, it's a boy, it's played more a factor this year than I've seen ever before. Point after. The kick after, the point after, uh -huh. uh, the PAT, uh, where guys have missed that. Here sure. you have a guy coming in, pressure situations. Sure. Those point after, those PATs are so important. Sure. And, boy, I tell you what, they miss a couple of them. It could cost them the game. Well, but Brother Rice, <laughs> two overtimes. That's right. They, uh, and it's not always the kicker's fault. There's three no. people involved. Well, right. more than that, actually, if you jump offside. But they got to get a good snap. you got to get a good hold. And he's got to time his, you know, his approach to the kick right. So. And that can't, it seems and, simple, right, but and it's, really, it's all about, you know, just – Executing, no, it is, it's not, it's and not. these are kids, and right. it's pressure, and right. they're going to be screaming. Right, it's, at Catholic Central. it's different kicking a point when you're up 21 to nothing as opposed to you're down 14, 13, right. and you're trying to kick that. Extra and, point. and maybe Coach Fields at some point, well, let's try and go for two because I don't feel, you know, yeah, it, it, it you plays know what, in. you know, Canton might be putting that play in their playbook. Let's go yeah. for a fake. Let's because, put that fake in there, and I'm sure they already have it, but let's work on it a little bit more because we might be using it this that's week. That's right. And the kickers played on Wednesday, so they didn't. No, really, until Thursday that they weren't going to have those guys. Right. I mean, they lose that game, they have them. So right. all of a sudden, those kids are pressed to do. They got a couple of days to get ready, and uh, we'll see how it shook out. Now, uh, last we want to get to uh, is eight-man football. This is kind of came up this week. I had an all-state meeting and for football in East Lansing, and and I was talking to somebody of writers throughout the state, and in particularly in the Thumb area, which there's all Carsonville, Port Sanilac, one of the top to have Marine City Cardinal Mooney is one of the newer teams that are playing eight man, but it, it's going to start to grow more. And the reason why, and you're going to find a team like Deckerville, who actually in the past has been pretty successful in the state playoffs, but because of all the 
schools around them joining eight-man football, for them, what, I'm, what I'm told, for them to stay in the 11-man football, they're going to start having to drive 100 miles right. And, right. And, and add to their you know, distances to travel yeah. to football games. And that's games. expensive to a school district. <laughs> yeah, especially a small school yeah. like Deckerville. So yeah. what's going to happen is Deckerville's probably going to opt for eight-mans, meaning there's more and more teams going to eight-man. Now, I'm, all, I'm thinking... What about northern Michigan, like the Alpena area and smaller schools in there? What about southwest Michigan? Martin is a school that's losing enrollment, likely to go to eight-man football. There's other schools like uh, Decatur and Lawton, and there's a lot of other small schools in that southwest part. What about in the Traverse City area? What about in the Upper Peninsula? What, what about down here? Well, I don't think there's going to be that many. I think what you find in this area, and it comes... It really comes to light when I'm at these meetings because I realize how few small schools are in the Detroit area. Right. Granted, you have Waterford, Our Lady of the Lakes, which I don't see them going to eight-man football anytime soon because they're in a league. You know, they're going to play the Shrines and, and they're going to play the Loyolas and whatnot. Um, you could have some charter schools, perhaps. Those are the smaller schools you're finding now that compete in the Detroit area, are the charter schools that are coming up through the ranks, so mm -hmm. to speak, playing in the charter school league with the Michigan Collegians. Right. Jalen and, Rose has that new school now that just opened this year. Correct. And if you're not if you're not ready for it, I mean, look at what Collegiate's doing. Look at Chandler Park Academy still in the state playoffs. It, my point is, if you can't be competitive, why not go eight man? Why not? Yes, with your alternative. Except for the travel issue, right? That's your then only you issue ha you then you have through. to look at that. Do we drive out to Marine City, which isn't that bad no. of a haul? But that's just one that's team. Just where where else can we find these games? So yeah. it's it's something the athletic directors will have to look at. And I don't, you know, if you're building a program, I'm not sure that's your how should I say within your gunshot, so to speak. I, I want to play 11 man football. I'm not starting a program so we can play eight man football. Right. So, we'll and it's a, I'll tell you what, if you've never seen eight man football, it's wild. It's they. Somebody, it's actually fun to watch. It's a lot of scoring, right? Yeah. I it's heard like there, there was one game that was like 88 to 75. I don't even know how they have that much time in a game to score that many points. But yeah. it is entertaining. And it's a good outlet for those schools yes. that cannot play or off. cannot field an 11-man team. Yeah, no question about it. And uh, where are they going to have the state championship? It's in the Uper Dome. Okay. So. Another wild place if you've never I, I'm been not, to. I'm not sure the state champs crew is going to make that trip. I know I'm not. <laughs> yeah, not this time. That's a long drive. All right. Well, once Speaking of a plane to get from the cross country yeah, to the yeah, soccer, right. we need that plane to get us up there. No doubt about it. We'll have to work that into the budget, the yeah. uh, state champ Cessna. All right, guys. Well, that's it for this week. I uh, want to remind you that we have one more week of the high school football radio show, State Champs, Friday night, 10 to midnight on WDFN. So make sure uh, you check that out. You can also listen to the show online, WDFN.com. And also on your BlackBerry, your Droid, your iPhone, you can just download the iHeartRadio app and check it out. It's really cool. Uh, 